Hello everybody, welcome back to Parent Vibes. In today's video, we will talk baby sleep. As usual, we will be sharing our experience, what worked for us, and our must-have items for successful sleeping. After we become parents, we realize what a big topic is baby sleep. Not so much during the newborn phase, because they basically sleep all day and they only have one sleep cycle. But around month four, babies transition to a deeper, to an adult adult sleep, let's say, and they have our same cycle. So they have the REM cycles and all the cycles we go through. And I didn't know that we actually, between cycles, we wake up. But as adults, we don't realize it and we just stay asleep. While babies go through the famous four month sleep regression and they keep waking up like every hour and they're not able to <laughs> fall asleep on their own. So that's why the majority of people suggest to start sleep training your baby. For us, it's been quite fairly easy she didn't went through the sleep regression we've been so so lucky but around month four we still wanted to try uh, to teach her let's say to go to sleep on her own because around this time they develop the skills to self-suit before the time newborn there's not a such thing as holding too much a newborn and they really need you to comfort them to reassure them to put them back to sleep when we start looking into showing her and teaching her how to sleep on her own we notice that there are two main school of thought there is the cry cry it out technique let's say which basically consists in putting your baby awake but drowsy in their crib or bassinet and leave the room and of course there will be some crying and parents usually come back and check in every five minutes then every 10 then every 15 minutes until baby falls asleep and the other school of thought is more let's say rock to sleep nurse to sleep contact sleep and co-sleeping and I honestly don't think that there is one best way. I noticed that people from each group, uh, it's a very hot topic. People fight over it, what best, and, and judge each other. I don't understand why would you judge other people's choices with their baby sleep. For me, honestly, I literally think that as just like everything related with babies and parenting, whatever works for you is best. So for us, we didn't want to choose one or the other option because personally, I didn't feel like letting her cry herself to sleep. I couldn't handle it. I know that is not traumatic for babies because after month four, if they cry a little bit, it's not a trauma. Of course, if it's longer than an hour, if they cry for an hour straight, you want to pick them up. But on the other hand, I didn't even want to let her sleep on us and having her always Always depending on us. What happened with baby is that if you put them to sleep on your chest for example or if you rock them to sleep when they wake up they will expect to be put back to sleep in the same way so we didn't want that to be the rule for us we wanted to find a way in the middle and yeah personally I wasn't ready for cry it out maybe it wasn't a big deal for her but I wasn't ready for that I couldn't handle that so we try to find something in between that again it's not in the books <laughs> it's not on all these pages of sleep training or sleep coaches because this is another thing that I notice I believe that all these accounts and companies take advantage somehow of desperate parents that are sleep deprived and that would do anything to put their babies to sleep it's literally sleep training a billion dollar industry and everyone try to convince you that you need that but us personally we didn't want to go outside of the family and uh, hire a sleep coach or getting a course because I think that we didn't want to get any external service for us so what we try to do around month four, of course, after preparing the room, after our bed routine, just cuddling with the baby, singing a song or reading a book and waiting for her to get drowsy and then slowly put her in her bassinet with a pacifier. I know that people that sleep train doesn't use any props, so no bottle, no pacifier, no nothing. We offer her the pacifier and left it in the bassinet in case she wanted to use it. And then just, of course, she started being super fussy, moving her legs, kicking a lot, not crying, but being very, very fussy and I just put her, my hand on her chest and tried to comfort her and she immediately grabbed the hand and put it again in her chest and after like seven minutes probably she fell asleep and the day after we tried the same thing and she would just grab the hand and little by little fall asleep I have to say that I never left the room that's also maybe considered a bad habit for 
sleep trainers, but it worked for us. And she would fall asleep in maximum 10 minutes, so it wasn't a big deal for me to wait. So I was right there, and when she would get fussy, I would just put my hand in the, in the bassinet without doing eye contact, because if you do eye contact, maybe they get overexcited and they think that you're about to pick them up or that it's playtime. And I have to say that by the end of the week, she was good to go. She would go to sleep on her own, basically on her own. I would just put her down and just give her like my hand and just touch her chest and she would fall asleep. And then when we transfer her from bassinet to crib, same thing, it's been pretty smooth. Maybe the first day took a little bit more because she was in a new space, but it was smooth sailing. I don't know if we've been lucky, but we didn't need to sleep train with the cry down method or either having her depending on us to fall asleep. Also, I have to say that what helps is having good naps during the day. I notice when she have good naps, she also have a good night of sleep. If naps are like a disaster time, she won't sleep that well that night. And another thing that is suggested is to not let them sleep for more than two hours. After two hours, you should wake them up because then they will not be as tired to go to sleep at a bedtime. <laughs> and this was more or less our technique, let's say. But there are a few items that are definitely essential and will make your life 50% easier. We'll do half of the job for you, right? Absolutely. So the first item was a swaddle. Now you would use this for the newborn phase and then after that, a sleep sack. Now why it's very important is that babies need to feel that comfort, right? They've been in the womb, right, for so long and they were oh, used to tight spaces and it brings comfort to them. So a swaddle will help them just kind stay of stay fit. In, stay fit, stay, stay in place. And it also, during babies have this thing called the moral reflex and that's when they just kind of move and wake themselves up. So it, it prevents that and it just kind of keeps them in a tight space. It also acts as a blanket, right? Because you can't have blankets or pillows in there like like an adult can because of the risk of potentially you know suffocation yeah. or just just any just problems can happen with that. So it solves that it solves both of those problems. So the sleep sack also helps them in reminding them that they need to go to sleep. You know, once they're in the swaddle or sleep sack, they're like it's subconsciously cueing them to like okay sleep is coming so the next item is blacked out curtains this is going to be a lifesaver for you guys magic it's gonna be magic that's it's, it's a good way to put it magic babies are easily distracted it can be any little one thing and they will fixate their attention on those items and constantly just wake themselves up when they do get up, right? So if your baby does happen to wake up at night, since you have a blacked out curtain, which the room is completely dark, your baby has nothing to fixate on. So even if they wake up like adults do too, there's nothing to look at. They can't see mom, they can't see their favorite toy. They just go back to sleep, yeah. right? So it's a very natural way to keeping them asleep. Yeah, we also help them to link the sleep cycle because if they briefly wake up and it's all dark, they will go into the next cycle instead of staying up. The next one we have for you is the noise machine. Again, this is another important one that that's just gonna be magical for, for your baby. Yeah, we mentioned it so many times. We mentioned it so many times. Sense. Link above for the sound machine that we use. But what's beautiful about the sound machine is that in the womb, it is extremely noisy. So for a newborn, they're actually used to a lot of noise. It actually is comforting to them. So with that, with a sound machine, you are able to create a sleeping environment that registers to your baby, okay, I feel comfort, it's time to sleep. Also for later phases of your baby, right after the newborn phase, it's good to keep, it keeps out distractions, right? From the TV to people talking in the other room. And again, it's another trigger and another mm. reminder to, to subconsciously let your baby know it's time to sleep, to sleep, right? Now the final suggestion is simply just having a consistent routine. There is power in routine for your baby. Your baby loves structure. So if you take those items, <laughs> I think she just can't <laughs> Oh, she just farted. She just farted. Oh, 
if you take those previous items and you're just consistent with it, even with consistent naps and consistent bedtimes, yeah. all of these is going to have a compound effect daily on your baby and it's really gonna just build in that structure that they need and it's gonna serve you at nine months, at two years, at three years. It's yeah. really gonna be a fundamental building block for your baby to sleep and to grow and to... Yeah, when they know what's to come, it's easier for them to go to sleep. They know it's not playtime, it's time to go to sleep. And more or less the time, it could be 30 minutes, let's say, uh, room, but always the same time also, it will make sure that they get tired by that time. Just like us, if we wake up every day to go to sleep at the same time, at some point you don't even need the alarm. Exactly. and you always get tired more or less at the same time well there's no difference with them actually it's easier to kind of program them absolutely yeah and another thing that it's important it's a suggestion and you do whatever works for you but to have nothing in the crib just it's just time to sleep if you start putting stuffed animals or little objects or toys baby the baby can get confused and maybe think yeah it's playtime and confuse that while it has to be a clear message the creep is just asleep yeah it's actually no different like an adult with a TV in the bedroom, yeah. right? It, I, I think most adults with a TV in the bedroom tend to find it harder to go to sleep just because, again, you're kind of saying you're overstimulating. That, yeah, you're overstimulating yourself and you're kind of signaling to your, yourself and your consciousness like, no, it's not time to go to sleep because this is the living room. So yeah, that concludes our video today. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Let us know down below if you found any techniques to help your baby as far as with sleep. And like always, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye.